Bear! We're back! Today, we're going to discuss another true crime story. Some of you guys enjoyed what I did last time, so we're gonna do it again. I've already primed my face. This is already prepped, so we can just get right on into it. If I'm looking off to the side, that's just because my mirror is here and that's how I can see my face. So today, we're going to talk about Elvira Manahan. Your parents probably know her actually because she was popular around the 60s all the way to the 80s. Elvira Manahan was the daughter of Simeon Ledesma and Conchita Bermejo. They were from Sila City and Negros Occidental. It was customary at the time that the eldest child be sent to Manila to live with the grandmother and she would be under the tutelage of her grandmother, Gertudes Montenola Ledesma. Also some of her aunts like Pasita and Soledad Ledesma. Growing up, she was considered one of the beauties of Manila. She was a socialite, she studied in Holy Ghost, now it's called Holy Spirit. It was said that the Ateneo and Lasalian boys would travel all the way to Holy Ghost just to get a glimpse of Elvira and also to hear her laugh. She had a very infectious laugh. It was also said that she liked to eat simple Filipino food like nilaga, paksil, and like a true ilonga, she liked to eat her meals with ripe mangoes and also ripe bananas. At 16, much to the disappointment of a lot of her admirers, she got married to Mandy Edu and their wedding was very well attended. Like I said, she is a socialite. Their wedding happened around the end of World War II and for some reason, I couldn't really get her birth date. Maybe it was still around the time when women didn't really like saying their age out loud. But if she was 16 at around the end of World War II, I'm assuming that she was born at around the 1930s. So and she got married at 16. About a year into their relationship, Elvira was pregnant with her and Mandy's child. Unfortunately, this is where it gets really sad because one day they heard the air raid siren and I guess this freaked out their favorite dog. And although Elvira told Mandy not to go outside, to fetch their dog, Mandy still went after their dog and I, I completely understand that. I also completely understand the side of Elvira. Like, of course, you would be so worried for your husband, but also, you know, it's your dog so you don't wanna bring him back. Hours passed, days passed, but Mandy never came home. And rumor has it that Elvira was actually the one who found her husband's dead body. Can you imagine being 16 and already being a widow? At 17, she went to one of the famous OBGYNs at the time. His name was Constantino or Tito Manahan. It was said that they had a whirlwind romance and within a year of meeting, they got married. And their marriage produced two sons. One was Johnny and one is Bongoy. As Mrs. Man Manahan, she quickly became the it girl. This was because of her charming personality and her incredible wit and also because of her impeccable fashion sense. In one account, it was said that she went to a formal party only wearing a long black gown and a fancy necklace, proving that less is more. So Elvira had this almost exclusive designer and his name was Ramon Valera. Manahan trusted Valera to the design all of her couture gowns and it only solidified her status as a fashion icon. Although it was also said that at home she liked to keep it simple, she just wear a malo and just let her hair down with no makeup whatsoever. At the time, socialites were expected to just be low profile but Elvira was something different. She was always striving to be different, to be unique, to be unconventional and that's actually what made her very popular. She was described as the life of the party because of her wit and her electrifying personality. She had always dreamt of becoming a star and this dream was actually made into reality because she starred in movies such as Ang Pulube, Pagdating sa Dulo, Burgess, Alaga, and Bagong Hari. Aside from her film career, Elvira Manahan was also very well known for hosting an evening entertainment show called Two for the Road. So just to display how much of an icon she was and how famous she really was, 
no celebrity, either local or foreign, could resist being interviewed by her. And there was even this one instance where her guests were a founding member of something, I'm not really sure of what, and also a monsignor. And they were trying to promote the Grand Marian procession happening in Intramuros. They brought out a Virgin Mary to the show, and Elvira, being the crazy talk show host that she was at the time, she suddenly screamed, virgins are so hard to find nowadays. And this made the founder person bite his tongue so hard that it bled. And it made the Monsignor do the sign of the cross and he froze. That's how controversial she was at the time. But Elvira's sister-in-law said that Elvira in person wasn't actually the hilarious airhead that you see in Who for the Road. She was actually more cerebral. She was more quiet and contemplative. She she said that Elvira was capable of such deep thoughts and that the many people who thought they knew her did not actually know her. As is the case with most celebrities, I believe. So now we get to the more gruesome parts of this story. The day before she passed, she was actually giving away some stuff to her family members. She was giving away fancy hats, couture gowns. I guess in hindsight, they were thinking, oh, alam niya that she was about to pass away or something. On October 16, 1986, the Manahan's Forbes Park house was just sold to the Puyats. Elvira Manahan and her husband Tito Manahan was getting ready to move to their retirement flat at the Urdaneta Apartments on Ayala Avenue. So at 7.30am, Jaime came to their Forbes Park house and their long-term house help Margarita. She let him in because okay, there's some discrepancies in the records in this part. So some records say that Jaime was actually the realtor who sold their Forbes Park house to the Puyats, but some records say that Jaime was just a constant companion with the actual realtor who sold their Forbes Park house to the Puyats. Yeah, that's not really important, but I just thought that I should let you guys know. So that's why the long-term house help Margarita let him into the house at 7.30 a.m. And after she let him into the house, she served him biscuits and coffee and let him know that Senora or Elvira Manahan would not be awake until 11 a.m., but that he was welcome to wait for her until then. He finished his biscuits and coffee first. All of a sudden, he went on a rampage, and it was said that he was very agitated because the prior night he spent in a casino and he had a very bad night. His actual purpose for coming to Elvira Manahan's house was to ask for funds from the sale that he made. He suddenly pulled out a gun. He shot Margarita, who died right then and there. He also shot Sheila beside her right eye. Sheila was also another house help. And he was on his way to Elvira's room. But upon passing the home gym, he grabbed a dumbbell and brought it to Elvira's room. He woke her up by pointing a gun to her face and asked for money. And once again, there's some discrepancy here. Some say that Elvira could not provide the money right then and there, while some say that they went to the study right across Elvira's bedroom wherein she wrote a check for him. After she wrote that check for him, not only did he shoot her in the face, he also bashed her head in with a dumbbell. Remember that dumbbell he got from the home gym before going to Elvira's room? Yeah, that's what he did with that. So the most popular theory that I saw was that Jaime Balatbat was a gambler and he had one really bad night in the casino and he killed Elvira Manahan for not being able to provide him the funds. But some theories say that maybe Jaime Balatbat had a more emotional, maybe even physical, relationship with uh, Elvira Manahan. I guess I could also believe that theory because of just how violent the crime was. Feel ko that was a more emotional act, a more passionate act. After bashing Elvira Manahan's head in, Jaime Balatbat ran out of the house as he should. And right behind him, I believe, was Sheila, the other house help, who was shot right next to her right eye, who did not pass away from that shot. She crawled out of the house, and the house help of a neighbor actually saw her, and that house help of the neighbor was the one who called the police. Unfortunately, Elvira did not pass away right then and there. She was alive right until 
Hospital, they rushed her to Makati Medical Center where she passed away. And it's even more heartbreaking because there are so many reports of Jaime Balatbot not being the same after that because he was so heartbroken he could never go back to their Forbes Park house. Afterwards, two years after being imprisoned, Jaime Balatbot passed away in prison because he was trying to escape. He tried to grab the gun of a guard and it's actually a little bit funny because according to the guard, it happened so fast. There were shots. I thought I was hurt. Then I saw him fall. Oh, no, no. This was kind of funny on the part of the guard. Like... <laughs> He didn't know na nagretaliate na siya. <laughs> Bigla na lang patay na si Jaime Balatbot. So yeah, that was the case of Elvira Manahan. It's very tragic. It's just sad because as spectators looking into the lives of these celebrities, these socialites, we feel a little detached to these stories. And that's why I found it really important to put in the details like her liking sinigang or paksiu or her only wearing malongs and letting her long hair down, not wearing makeup at home because it really humanizes them in my opinion. And fun fact, Elvira's son with Tito Manahan, si Johnny, He's actually the vice president, I believe, of ABS-CBN. So yeah, that was the case of Elvira Manahan. Let me know what you think about the theories about the relationship between Elvira and Jaime Balatbat. Do you think that they were really just like business partners or do you think that their relationship was a little bit more intimate? Personally, the only evidence that I can see pointing to a relationship a little bit more intimate is just the manner in which Jaime murdered Elvira Manahan. That seems a little bit more crime of passion-y for me because he could have killed her with just a shot to the face but he didn't. Parang he he saw the dumbbells uh, home gym on the way to her room. He already had a gun with him. So why did he need the dumbbells? To me, bashing somebody's head in with a dumbbell just feels like such an emotional act. Parang may gigil eh. That's the only thing lang naman. Although, since her husband, Tito Manahan, was so sad about her passing away and that he wasn't able to move on from it according to his friends and colleagues ever. It makes me also think that she probably was faithful to him and they probably had a really good relationship. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I really want to talk to you guys about this. Ayo. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight and um, if you haven't subscribed, please remember to subscribe or at least consider subscribing. I I promise to try to make it worth your while. Thank you once again. Bye, Pear!